Hi there. My name is Brady and I'm from Sparrow Quilt Company. I was really excited yesterday to get the mail because we just received a whole pile of these really great new uh, tearaway quilting designs. Now this is a, a design that is printed on a tissue type of paper, very lightweight, um, so that you can put it over top of the surface of your quilt and when you're machine quilting, you're simply gonna follow the lines. Now you may have heard of this type of thing before that is um, called a pantograph that goes on the back of a long arm machine. Well, the people who design these pantographs are now making them on this tissue type paper so that domestic quilters can also use the nice, consistent, and simple, easy to use designs on their domestic quilting as well. So we've decided to start really simple. This design is called Scribbles Petite and it's just a simple meander. It's very um, flowy and there's no points and that makes it really uh, easy to follow, especially the first time. You wanna try something that is easy to follow. So that's what that looks like. This pattern, the quilt that we're uh, gonna be quilting is from the book Playful Petals by Cory Yoder. You can find that on the website at sparrowquiltco.com. I just thought I would quickly show you what pattern it was before we began. Now you can see that we have covered our surface with uh, some newsprint because we're gonna be using some basting spray and that crap gets everywhere. So you wanna make sure that you have protected your area where you are gonna be working. The first thing I'm going to do is um, spray the back of this paper. Now it worked out well. These papers are 48 inches long and my quilt is 48 inches wide. I, I Honestly, I did not plan this, it just worked out that way. So if you have a wider quilt, you are gonna need a second sheet to continue the row past the end of this first one, okay? And we'll do something with a bigger quilt down the road, but let's start small to begin. I'm gonna flip this over so that the right side is facing down and I'm just gonna spray it with my 505 spray. And I'm not gonna spray it so thick that it's like sopping wet. I'm just gonna lightly spray it, okay? I've got it, you know, 18, 24 inches away. And now I'm gonna flip it right side up and start lining up the top edge of the design with the top edge of my quilt. I'm not gonna press down on it until I have it where I want it. Of course, I wanna make sure that the dark line is on the body of the quilt. I don't want that to fall off the top edge of the quilt. Otherwise, that means my quilting will fall off the top edge of my quilt. In fact, I'm gonna aim for that line to be a quarter of an inch down from the top edge. That gives me space to attach my binding without compromising the design. Good. So we're good all the way along that top edge there. Now we were just reading over the instructions and it says to put that with the sticky side down and then press in place. I'm, you can see that this paper actually has two rows on it, but once I'm finished these two, I now need to add another piece of paper. So these dashed lines that are below the solid line are gonna represent the next row of stitching. So when I bring this one over, I'm gonna wanna spray it first but just so, you, while it's still easy to handle, I'm gonna show you quickly here. Can we zoom in there? So I'm gonna take this dashed line and I'm gonna overlap it onto the prior solid line. And you can see how it just uh, continues the prior design. So now what I'll do is flip this over spray it and line it up this exact way to make sure that everything continues on nice and smooth. I do recommend choosing one side that you're going to always put your title end of the paper at. If they're always going this way, then you won't get confused. Nothing will be upside down and not align correctly. 
if you just have that rule that they all go the same direction. It will avoid confusion for you. And if you do have to extend the width of the papers, the uh, lining up instructions are there for that as well. And now that it's gluey on the back, I'm being quite careful. This paper is sturdy, but it is lightweight, so I don't want to attach it and then have it tear. So I'm just overlapping those prior solid lines with my dashed lines. And then that's going to ensure that the patterns all nest into each other correctly. Now this is so great because it's going to keep you nice and consistent throughout your quilting. That's the real advantage to pantographs or using line designs on the long arm is that it just gives us something to follow from point A to point B that keeps all of our quilting the same. I don't know about you, but I start quilting and my designs don't remain consistent. They get bigger, they get smaller. I forget what I was doing. It doesn't look the same as when I began. Now, don't you see how this would be a lot faster than chalking on your quilt or using uh, pens to mark it or something? This is so nice and quick. So again, I've got my title. I'm going to put it to my right. Make sure I don't mess this up. Flip it over and spray the back side. And I probably would wash this quilt after I was done the quilting just to make sure that there was no sticky residue left behind. All right. So same as on the prior row, I am just going to overlap these little dashed lines onto the solid lines and that is going to have me perfectly aligned. I hope. Now you can see how very very simple it is. And it does lift and uh, replace again quite easily. That basting spray isn't instantly permanent or anything like that. All right, good stuff. Lay that all out. Okay. So I've got one more here out of my package. These do come in packages of four, and like I said, they're 48 inches wide. So you're going to have to figure out how many you will need in order to complete your entire quilt. It's possible that one package won't be enough unless it's, say, a baby size or a crib size. One last spray. And we'll place that right side down. All right, so once I have this all together, then I'm going to uh, actually baste my quilt, all my three layers together. And then I will take this over to my uh, domestic machine. And it's your choice if you want to start in the center and work your way out. I'm probably just going to start at one end because that will make, you know, make it easiest on my domestic machine. But once you have the entire surface covered with your paper designs, then you're ready to go ahead and do your quilting. So if this is something you think you might be interested in, go ahead and click the link above the video. We'll be back shortly with another video showing you how we are going to go about doing the actual quilting. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.